In December of 2008, our detectives responded out to Dixie River Road, modern day, that's out where the newer outlets are, reference to uh, some human remains being found. They worked to identify them. Over the years, they had no success identifying who this person was. Our homicide unit, through one of our retired detectives, uh, requested the help of DNA Doe Project that's all volunteer based. They assisted us with funding and through the, the FGG research, Forensic Ge Genetic Genealogy Research. They obtained a DNA profile after a couple of different attempts and worked to identify who this person was and were successful in doing so. In September of 2022, they called me and gave me a potential name of a victim based on their uh, research they had done. I contacted the family of that victim. That victim was a missing person from Charlotte from 2003. Got them to meet with me. Was able to eventually get a DNA familial match through one of the, uh, the DNA databases. And we positively identified him as Jose Elder Espinoza. Family was very, very happy. Uh, I was actually sitting with them when we were able to get the, the confirmation. That was really cool to sit with them. Um, so that was the first. Then there was another victim found in June of 2021 here in Charlotte. The victim was a skeleton essentially. There was there were some, uh, a little more than your average skeleton. There was some, still some clothing and things there. Our detectives worked to identify that person. The medical examiner did their work, did not determine there was any foul play. It was suspected to be some sort of a natural death. It was in a wooded area uh, in Charlotte. And we were unable at that point to, to identify this victim. We requested the help of Leslie Kaufman and Dr. Ann Ross with the North Carolina Unidentified Project. They were able to send a bone to Othram Labs out in the Woodlands, Texas. That funding to do that work came from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Foundation. They worked the case, got back to me. Uh, Leslie Kaufman gave me a potential victim name based on her forensic genetic genealogy research. And I contacted family and uh, was able to obtain a DNA sample from them. And we were eventually able to get a familial match in one of the DNA databases. And he was positively identified as Cody Ray Harrell. Again, family is very elated about that. The third case is so far my uh, oldest one I've identified through this. In February of 1988, some human remains were located in an elevator shaft that was at uh, 237 North Tryon Street. That is now the Dunhill Hotel. That building had been abandoned since 1981 and Dunhill Development was remodeling the building when they located human remains in the elevator shaft. Our detectives then in 1988 didn't have a lot of resources to identify a skeleton. Those remains sat in uh, storage until 2022 when I transported the remains to Raleigh and again requested the assistance of Dr. Ann Ross and Leslie Kaufman with the North Carolina Unidentified Project. Dr. Ross was able to send a bone sample to Othram Labs in the Woodlands, Texas, and uh, we were able to obtain a DNA sample from them and start the forensic gen genetic genealogy work. Again, this lab work was expensive and it was funded by the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Foundation. Leslie Kaufman contacted me, gave me a potential victim name. I contacted some family of that victim, obtained a DNA sample from a family member, and was able to get a familial match in the one of the databases. And we've uh, positively identified that victim is Oliver Doc Mundy. His friends knew him as OD, and he was a War, World War II veteran. Uh, originally from Mooresville, he had kind of been down on his luck and was known to live on the streets of Charlotte around 1988. I would say that uh, in all of them, there were tears. Everyone was sad and happy at the same time. I don't think we will ever be able to give them all the answers, but to give them some answers as to, to where and when and how, that I believe that helped them all. I don't think anyone should be buried and be an unknown, at least not, not forever. And in this case, we were able to help three, at least three people. FGG is huge. For years, suspects, we didn't know who they were. We have their DNA. And same thing for victims. We had victims we didn't know who they were. It is the newest, best thing we have. Slowly, it is changing how we do our work in our cold case unit. When the police foundation stepped up and said, we'd like to help, it was a big relief to me, a big relief to, to our chain of command, I believe. So that was huge. Uh, on the forensic ge genetic genealogy aspect of it, Almost all of these people are volunteer. Leslie Kaufman is a volunteer. She's doing this for free. DNA Doe Project is all volunteer. I cannot say enough, and Ann Ross for that matter, Dr. Ross, knowing that people are willing to help on their own time without payment because they're just, like me, excited to find those answers. It's, it's really fun to do the work.